over the river and through the woods. To grandmother's house we go. A great plague had fallen upon the land, and with it came famine. Many families had perished throughout this terrible season, and those who survived were subject to melancholy or madness. Not even my homestead escaped the pillet of others, as the sickness had left me a childless widow. The reaper had seen to take the life of my husband, a woodsman, and a fair hunter. I thought myself damned to a cruel loneliness that was until the messenger brought to me a letter from my mother's mother, who had in these grim times fallen ill in her cottage on the far side of the black forest. In her note, she requested that I bring her both medicine and provisions, as she was far too weak to tend to the farm. Although not outright, the words conveyed a sense of urgency, and being able-bodied kin, it would be my duty to see to this task. With no other to call family, I studiously gathered necessities for my travels, food and medicines for my elder mother, as well as utilities to serve my own purpose such as a torch for light and my late husband's wood axe, under the pretense of what dangers may await me in the dark forest. Lastly, I donned my hooded cloak of red, which many of my village would often mention with envy. It would bring courage for the journey to come. The first moments of my departure were measured in joyless footsteps. Although it was still daylight, the sky had grown dark with soft rain, making it far too wet to properly light my torch. Nevertheless, I proceeded with haste towards the mouth of the vast black forest. Few ever set foot into these woods, and even the bravest of men prefer to travel along the safer paths. It has been said that the black forest is home to both thieves and fearsome beasts alike, and rumors of unmarked graves circled amongst the village tavern the more superstitious of the townsfolk would often speak of hushed whispers of a witch's curse placed upon the forest generations ago by a woman hung for devil worship. I was never one to fall prey to such myths, but even so I bowed my head in silent prayer before entering the dreaded thicket. It is worth note to mention that naming the black forest such was well placed. The tangled branches overhead obscured most of the little light that remained, casting the ground in a pale glow. Bleak surroundings aside, I was able to make my way unhindered for the most part. The few brief moments I strayed from the path were of little consequence, and I was able to adjust myself due east. That was until nightfall. Dusk had come suddenly and without warning. But fortune had dried the air for my torch. I resolved to travel without sleep, taking only brief rests when fatigue took hold. Tis a foolish folly to let one's guard down. Even when thought alone, I made a small fire with my second torch to keep my cold flesh warm whilst I enjoyed the modest meal of a shortbread and jam. Under such woeful circumstance, I managed to feel at ease for the first time since before my journey. I even began to scoff at the dangers that gripped so many others in fear, as I, a mere girl of nineteen, had traveled more than half the black forest in a single night. Other forces, however, saw fit to cut down my pride. Not long into my rest, I began to hear the baying of wolves in the distance, the sounds of some poor creature being torn into ribbons. Starvation had not been limited to man. The wolves were known to become extraordinarily vicious when deprived of substance. Knowing well enough not to stay in one place, I quickly gathered my belongings and moved on, putting as such distance between myself and those horrible noises. As the trees became dense, I lost track of the path at some point, but continued regardless. A thick fog was forming over the ground, and my brisk walk was matched by unsure footing. Many times I did stumble over unseen root or stones, and my knees showed bruises for proof. As sore as they were, I could not halt my stride. Least I wished a brutal death. A shriek from above startled me, but 
"'Twas only an owl, and yet another reminder to train my ear. Moving my legs at a more rapid pace did little to mask my scent, as not before long I heard those feral beasts from behind, and the beating of war drums bellowed in my chest. Frantically, I tried to outrun the howls, cracking twigs beneath my feet and wafting mist around my cloak. Sometimes the barks and growls fell from afar. Other moments, they came from just outside of sight. The twisting path of the splintered trees seemed to be what kept the snapping jaws at bay, because it was not until I slipped my footing in the clearing of a forgotten cemetery that they were upon me. At first, they simply circled around me, sniffing the air and lapping their tongues. There were three in all, each large and fierce, but showing clear signs of malnourishment. My gaze met the largest of the three. Its eyes glistened in the moonlight, huge and wild, all the better to see me. It bared its teeth in a snarl, the others doing the same. I gripped the sharpened axe of my lost husband and hoped that his spirit would see me to safety. The first wolf lunged itself towards me, but I stepped aside and heard its pain to yelp as it fell into a headstone. The second brute snapped from my throat, but I sought to it that it would only taste the heat of my torch. The fur of the beast had been caught aflame, and I lashed out with a kick to sneer it away. Just as I turned to run, I felt an agony from my leg where one of the wolves had clenched its jaw, and I fell to the ground, extinguishing my torch in the damp soil. As it began to drag me, I tightened both hands around the axe, and with a swift vengeance, I brought that blade down upon that foolish creature's neck. At once, its teeth released me. Just before the last of the three leaped down, I stopped at a hair's length from my face with the wooden axe handle. But its hunger was persistent. It drooled for the thirst of blood, its hot breath reeking of death. But... I would not allow myself to become this monster's prey. With a forceful push, I found myself liberated, and with another, I buried my axe into its spine. As it lay dying, I heard a ravenous howl shriek into a soft whisper. Victory was short, as I can hear another starving pack from a ways off. My travels would have to continue. I limped my body throughout the thorn bush leaving the violence behind me. Unfortunate that, at this moment, my injured limb gave way to a hillside slope, descending me into an unwanted slumber. I awoke just before dawn, to the sound of crows. Perched in the trees, those little devils awaited my untimely fate. But no curse in flesh would fill their bellies in this morning. After tending to my wound... I was made ready to further myself from the accused woods. Resuming east, I found a path that exited the black forest before the first light. In good time after, I had reached my dear grandmother's cottage. How overjoyed she was when she was presented with medicine and good tidings. Not wanting to startle her with my already most unladylike appearance, I set down my sweet woodman's axe and wiped the dirt from my brow. It became apparent in a quick fashion that good tidings would do little for my elder. When I entered the cottage, I heard bangings and stifled grunts from her bedroom. When I opened the door, I felt a terror in my heart as I saw thrashing beneath the sheets and presumed a seizure had taken hold. Throwing away the blankets, I learned that epilepsy was not the case, but rather... A wolf had broken through her window and was currently in the act of tearing my grandmother limb from limb. A ghastly sight indeed, the wolf took notice to my presence and turning to face me, its blood-drenched snout appeared almost a grin. The last sight I can recall was my own blood running across the floorboards, running as red as the hood it had soaked. creepy take on Red Riding Hood, huh? I was reading it and I was like, hmm, and then I was like, ah, I see what they did there. Made it creepy, Red Riding Hood. And I do apologize with a shorter pasta today. 
it's Easter weekend. I have a lot of stuff to do. I have company and whatnot, but I really wanted to get a video out for you guys. So yeah, I really hope you liked it. And as always, my last video will be on the top left. My next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen. The secret word will be pepper. Like P-E-P-P-E-R. Because that's my dog's name and she is snoring in the background. And she made it a pain in the butt for me to edit. So, pepper. And don't forget, guys. There's always someone or something watching you.